Welcome everybody, this is the game of the day of round number four from the Bilbao Chess Classics and just like the past three games of the days, we're going to have the world champion involved, Magnus Carlsen. He's just producing so many decisive games, in fact he's producing the only decisive games in this tournament so far. So let's have a look, he was playing against Wesley So with the white pieces and let's get started here starting out with e4 e5 another three knight c6 and so is going for the berlin but carlson saying no thank you no berlin endgame today he's playing the anti anti berlin 4d3 bishop c5 and now bishop takes c6 going for this particular structure here and now a rather unusual move queen e2 which hasn't been played as much. Usually the main move here is knight bd2 or even h3. But queen e2 is already saying I'm, I'm flexible. I might castle kingside but I'm not sure yet. I might also castle queenside. So is mirroring this. Actually I wasn't planning on saying the name of the black player here but then it just happened to be that way. Queen e7, knight bd2 and now bishop g4, h3, bishop h5. So far normal stuff and here Carlsen took a long time and then played a3 which seems to be like a waiting move still remaining as much flexibility as possible. Also keeping the options open where this knight is going to go by f1 g3 maybe by c4 not sure and introducing a new option to maybe expand on the queen side by playing b4. Now knight d7, black is playing all the standard moves here, knight d7, the knight is maneuvering and possibly going to the best square in the position in this particular pawn structure which is e6. And also black is going to stabilize and allow some space for his bishop by playing f6. b4 for now, bishop retreats to d6, could have also gone to b6 but it doesn't make a huge difference. Knight c4, now f6, knight e3. And obviously the knight might come to f5 and indeed it is coming to f5 in the next move. And here black played the very principal move a5, attacking the white pawn structure on the queen side, trying to exploit this b4 move by white. But I think instead knight f8 regrouping the knight to e6 like I mentioned earlier was just so well placed and also opening up the d7 square, which seems to be the best square for the queen in this position, would have been better for black. Let's say castle, knight e6, black is going to castle next move, and the position is, is equal. But instead, a5, knight f5, and here, so wanted to put as much pressure on the b4 pawn as possible and play queen f8, but instead queen f7 would have been more natural and give black better chance to to castle finally even though it is still a little bit tricky but in the game so later played the queen from f8 to f7 just looked like he lost the tempo here after b takes a5 rook takes a5 castle and rook a4 seems to be a good move to stop white from playing a4 the general problem we'll see this again several points later in the game as well black cannot castle here because of bishop h6, very nice, cute little move. And of course black cannot take because of this fork. But otherwise there's no way to defend this pawn on g7 really. So that's a slight problem. And it's really making it difficult for black to finish his development. That's why a queen might have been better on, on d7 instead of f7. All right, but in the game, queen f8 was played. Now really forcing white to take on a5, rook b1 wouldn't be possible. Black could just take on b4. But white is actually not too unhappy about taking on a5. First of all, well, positionally speaking, it's not something white wants to do in general, but because the black king is still in the center, black will still need some time to finish his development, to castle. It opens up a file and it opens up ideas and threats against black. So white is not too unhappy to take on a5. Rook takes a5, castle. And here queen f7 now, that's what I was saying, black kind of lost the tempo. 
Better than Queen F7 would have been either King D8, which is a computer move. Um, but really, the King is the problem. Even though the King is not completely safe on C8, it might be still a good option to at least solve this problem for now. Or another interesting idea, once again, Rook A4 to stop White from playing A4 and also from moving the Rook out of the way on this diagonal e1 a5 so it cannot be attacked and we'll see why this might be a good way of progressing because of what we what white is going to do in the game still the position already feels easier to play for black uh, for white and black has to solve problems so not an easy task against the world champion queen f7 was played a4 that's what i was talking about now white can expand a little bit, very good move by the world champion and he can follow with bishop d2, maybe a5 and have a target here on b7. Now knight c5, again castle the whole time, the problem is bishop h6 and really it's not easy to get rid of this problem for now. So knight c5 and here already white has several attractive options. Carlsen went for queen e1, bishop d2 was also very nice move here, rook a8, rook fb1 and maybe follow with bishop e3 and ask some questions about this pawn which is a weakness and is a target for the white pieces. But queen e1, that's what I want to talk about earlier. Now white is able to unpin this knight with tempo by moving the queen out of the way and then can move the knight. Here black played b6 And now knight d2 and the knight is coming to c4 and suddenly there are all kinds of targets, right? The bishop on d6, maybe the pawn on b6 and of course the rook on a5. Here so it shows the best option to accept this pawn sacrifice on a4. But now knight c4. Threatening to take on d6 of course, which is why black is not in time to take on a1. That would drop the queen. And so played the bishop back, but he played it back too far. The bishop should have gone to f8 and not to e7. Sorry, it's too late. Other way around. The bishop should have gone to e7, not to f8, where so put it. After bishop e7, the position remains unclear. Bishop e3, and now you need to find king d7, which so actually played in the game, but with the bishop on f8, there's a difference. Here castle is still not possible. Bishop h6 might be possible, but even stronger is just taking some material here. And this wins a piece for white. But king d7, uh, position is not that clear. For example, rook takes a4, knight takes a4, f4. Of course, white has good compensation for the pawn. No question, the king is in the center. There are still enough pieces on the board, but black can put up a fight and has defensive resource and it's far from clear. Um, so quite different from what we'll see in the game. With the bishop f8, now bishop e3 is nice to introduce this idea of bishop takes c5 to threaten this. And really the best move, you know what the best move is? Rook to g8. Why is that? Well the point is that now after bishop takes c5, rook takes a1, queen takes a1, bishop takes c5, after this check the rook would be defended on g8. That's the reason why you play rook g8. But of course, white doesn't have to go for this line, which would help black. Uh, white can play differently. And well, if rook g8 is the best move black has, then that's already bad news for black. So king d7. And now simply queen c3. And if the bishop was on e7 in this position, black could support the rook again on a4 by playing rook a8, but now that's not possible. And it's already difficult to find a sensible move for black. In fact, as I'm looking at this, during the commentary it was not clear to me, but let's say black played any move, like let's say bishop g6. The threat is actually to take on b6 and take on c5 because now black is forced to take on a1 otherwise the rook hangs and then 
there's rook a7 and winning the queen after bishop takes c5, rook a7. So just a key on d7, so misplaced, of course, right in the center. The best black like, could have done was rook takes c4. But, well, this is also given in exchange already, of course. And white is going to continue his attack and has very good winning chance. I don't have to tell you that. So I was hoping maybe knight takes e4 would work, but, well... No, it does not. Knight takes b6 also here to open up the 7th rank. And that's what's going to kill black, really. That's the 7th rank is open. White is, always op White is always able to come in through the A-file with the rook to the 7th rank. So give the knight up and then just take back on e4. And that's it, really. I mean, what if black takes on a1... You can see already, not rook b1, but taking back, the rook is coming to a7, coming to a8, and black just has three pieces, really. The bishop in h5, bishop in f8, bishop h8, rook h8, that are not participating in the game, they're just on the sideline, not defending. That's just too many uh, pieces offside. So I was maybe hoping that queen c4 was saving him to exchange queens, and of course that would alleviate the pressure but queen d2 keeps the queens on the board king goes to the side and now white has already many choices bishop takes b6 was what we discussed in the live commentary just giving the bishop sacrificing the bishop and invading with the queen but you know what it's not necessary white just plays g4 the bishop moves and now that the square d1 is not longer covered by the bishop rook d1 queen d7 queen d8 nothing black can do and so just resign and this is indeed completely appropriate because white is already checkmate in, in 30 moves i believe just completely over this absolutely nothing black can do for example rook takes a1 queen d8 and rook takes a1 threatening queen a8 rook a7 yeah so Really a masterpiece by Carlsen who demolished his opponent here in this quiet line of the anti-Berlin, really. Who would have thought that this came out of the anti-Berlin? But because there is so much strategic complexity, white is staying flexible, not choosing it, not saying it, what is my plan? Am I going to castle king side? Am I going to attack on the queen side? Where is my knight going to go? And really this point in time when so played his active move a5, which looked good, but instead it was more important to put his piece on the right square. So queen on f7 just misplaced. Black could never castle because of this cute little idea, bishop h6, and then black really never castle, and that was his downfall. So Carlson with the third win in a row. Very strong performance so far by him, and tomorrow it's going to continue. Live commentary with Fiona and Tony Style. Style Anthony, always mix it up. And yours truly. So hope to see you then again and I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Goodbye.